Bristol Motor Speedway will be hosting a Major League Baseball game in 2025. Plus, Junior Motorsports has a driver for the 88 in 2025. Who is it? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. In some unexpected news, Bristol Motor Speedway will be hosting a Major League Baseball regular season game in 2025. The two teams, the Cincinnati Reds versus the Atlanta Braves, according to Jordan Bianchi from The Athletic. Now, of course, Bristol Motor Speedway has hosted sporting events in the past. In 2016, they hosted a college football game between Tennessee and Virginia Tech, and they packed 156,000 people into the grandstands there like it was the Bristol Night Race during NASCAR's peak. It was visually awesome to look at on television. I heard the traffic situation afterwards, not the best, especially when you have to deal with Tennessee fans no offense to some of them but the other ones you know the ones i'm talking about not the best when it comes to figuring out traffic flow or well life in general but a baseball game at bristol motor speedway that is very interesting marcus smith and bristol motor speedway kind of are like the yamaha of nascar they're willing to try just about anything you want to put dirt on it sure concrete yeah asphalt no thank you i want to have a football game here we can do that cleese mcfarland yep we got that same way Yamaha's like, we build motorcycles, pianos, saxophones, and jet skis. Uh, okay, sure. Also build generators and Formula E cars. <sighs> Not really sure how all those go together, but I respect the hustle. I just like to assume that as two co-founders, one of them's like, I love music. The other one's like, I want to go fast. And they're like, okay, we'll settle in the middle here and we'll both just make these. Sure, fine, whatever. So the Reds, and the Braves will play at Bristol Motor Speedway next year. When will that happen? I'm guessing if they do it, Major League Baseball does this like they did the Field of Dreams game. It's going to either start or finish off one of the series that those two teams will play together next year. So it will either be May 5th through the 8th or August 1st through the 3rd next year. One of those two areas is likely the time that that game will be played. An official announcement is expected to happen on Friday. So what will baseball field look like at Bristol Motor Speedway? Well, I did an overhead shot and kind of laid a field out on it, assuming that they're going to start down at one end and kind of have it open up towards the other end of the racetrack, which would absolutely be possible. So side to side, pit road wall to pit road wall, the one that the pit crew members jump over is 340 feet. You need 127 feet and three inches from first to third. So that leaves you about 100 feet on either side. Basically, if you take the foul lines all the way out to the walls, you're looking at about 320-ish feet in the corners. And then center field, Major League Baseball would do the funniest thing and make it about 600 feet if they absolutely wanted to, like polo ground style, which would be hilarious. There is also this overlay that um, someone on Twitter sent me as well of Truist Park inlaid into Bristol Motor Speedway, having home base down in the corner, uh, which makes home plate rather, uh, makes a lot more sense probably the way that it'll be laid out. Uh, I just did it center wise looking out because it would help sell uh, maybe more tickets or at least be visually a little bit better, but it probably is the way that they'll set it up uh, there. I wish they would use the banking in the outfield like this was Minute Maid Park back in the day before they leveled that out because that was absolutely wonky and made no, uh, there was no reason for it to happen, it made no sense at all. But it was there. Why were the Reds and the Braves chosen for this? Well, if you've ever been to the American Southeast, the Braves are the team of choice for basically North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, North Florida, Alabama, Mississippi. Hell, you can probably throw Arkansas in there as well, as well as Kentucky in some areas. It's the team of the South. So uh, obviously when the Braves were on TBS, every one of their games was broadcast like WGN in the Midwest for anybody that got that with the Cubs. It makes a lot of sense why they were so popular. Popular. And then you have the Cincinnati Reds, who have a really strong foothold in Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana, and even the northern parts of Tennessee. Makes a lot of sense to have those two teams play. I obviously am from Cincinnati, if you paid attention to this channel. Big Reds guy. Got Ellie De La Cruz here. Bobblehead. There's a lot more Reds bobbleheads. Up on top, we got another one to unpack over here. Yeah, big Reds guy. I'm excited for this to happen. Unfortunately, the Reds will continue to do stuff like this. The ownership is like always down for the Reds to do things because it takes the attention away from the fact that they've only had like three winning seasons in the last 25 years. So yes, Reds fans, it's very exciting we get to do this the same way we got to do the Field of Dreams games, but we still have no chance of winning a World Series in 2024, 2025, probably 2026 as well. It's just really unfortunate to have a ownership group that is not committed to sustainable winning the way that they say they are in their press releases. 
but it'll still be very fun to go to this game. I fully expect to be at Bristol Motor Speedway for this uh, game. It looks like it's going to be a great time. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Once again, use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have a new bra or Driven shirt on. I almost said BreakHard shirt. No, this is a Driven shirt. Use code BREAKHARD. Uh, I wear the sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears the sunglasses. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and maybe you can as well. So check out their website today. Moving on to the other news that came out on Tuesday afternoon, Junior Motorsports released a teaser video and I would play it here for you, but Mike Davis is probably going to come for me. So I'm not really interested in having that happen. I don't want to get thrown in Twitter jail. I don't want to have to negotiate with Mike Davis, but it is a driver walking into Junior Motorsports and walking to the stairs, signing a contract and then getting ready to sit down and have an interview with Dale Jr. Obviously, it will be on Dale Jr. Download on Wednesday. That driver is going to be Connor Zilich. We already knew that this was going to happen. Adam Stern talked about it in a uh, post at the Sports Business Journal a few weeks ago, maybe even a month ago at this point. It, he's expected to go into the 88 car, which obviously we know based on this video that it will be the 88. WeatherTech is supposed to be the sponsor uh, behind that as well as SVG graduates up to the Cup Series next year in 2025. Zillis just makes a lot of sense. He's the most hyped up prospect right now. Um, he is a blue chip. He wins in literally everything that he gets in at this point, and he'll obviously be on loan from Trackhouse over to Junior Motorsports to do this deal. Um, yeah, I, I heard this back at IRP that this deal was done already as well. You know it's Zillage because in the video from him at Chicago, he's wearing the same Nikes that he's walking up the stairs in at Junior Motorsports for his signing and you know eventual interview with Junior for, for the podcast. Will Junior Motorsports have five cars next year? I think that's probably the biggest question now. Will they have five full-time cars? The one, the seven, the eight, the nine, and now the 88? Well, Sam Mayer flirted with the Front Row Motorsports opening. That sounds like it's going to Zane Smith. So that kind of takes him out of the running for that. There is an opening at Colleg. He has had conversations with them before. If he decides to move up to the Cup Series, that frees up a spot. Do they run with four cars, or do they try to put Carson Quapple in one of those cars full-time? I really like Carson Quapple. I think that guy is a top 10 prospect with ease right now. He's had an average finish of eight in the uh, Xfinity Series starts that he's had. He probably should have won Dover. He's come very close to winning, and he continually gets better in those race cars. I hope he's full-time next year, but Connor Zillish will be full-time in that 88 car. And hey, the kid's probably going to go out there and win a race or two, definitely on road courses. With SVG graduating up to the Cup Series, with AJ Allmendinger probably moving back up to the Cup Series as well, road courses are going to be wide open until Connor Zilich comes in because I fully expect him to be just as good on a road course as he was in the truck series race. And if he didn't blow the first corner and then get himself behind, he probably ends up winning that truck race at Coda earlier this year. Now he will have uh, four starts, I believe four starts this year for junior motorsports in 2024, starting with Watkins Glen in a few weeks time. He'll be in the truck series uh, for, I believe five races as well to close out this year, starting this weekend at Richmond. So we're going to get a pretty good sample size of what Connor's going to be able to do and bring to the table next year. And our this year he has been absolutely lights out winning multiple times he's won an lmp2 he's won in the moth mx5 series he's won on the cars tour he wins in everything he gets in I'm excited to see what he can do in 2025. Let me know what you think about Bristol Motor Speedway hosting a baseball game between the Reds and the Braves. And what do you think about Connor Zilich signing with Junior Motorsports for 2025? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.